Hello everyone, how's it going? So hopefully you won't have any PC problems this time like we've just got with this camera. Just stalled, now it's back. It's stalled, now it's back. Who knows? Who knows what's going to go on? I feel I need to <clears throat> completely and utterly redo my computer. Take it back. And should I go for Windows 11? Ah, I don't think I will. Go back to Windows 10. I mean like, you know, hey, it worked, didn't it? Mike, how are you doing? Yesterday's stream was boring because it was space trekking across the universe, right? What I'm doing here, right, what I'm doing here is just finishing off the space trekking across the universe. Uh... Good grief. Let's get into frame shift and let's get cracking. Gonna do some Thargoid combat in the system today. Um, let's see how it goes. Frame shift drive charging. This is the Celeste voice pack. I've currently got. Simon, how's it going? <clears throat> You got 2,000 microcontrollers in your hold. Yeah, well I could do before I swatch, uh, switch ships over. I was just saying, yesterday's stream was such that the computer just gave up, it just went, it just went <gasps> and just hung. It completely hung, and I thought, what the hell is going on here? So I'm thinking of a, a rebuild of it. I really am. So I'll, I'll drop these off, then I'll go to your carrier and I'll pick them up. Damn you, Thargoids. Yay, we're off. Yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean about a peaceful afternoon. It's all mentalness in this house. Have they got us? I, they're all the way over there. They are nowhere near. They've gone. No, nah, he's gone too far. He's gone too far. Oh, this one's coming in. Look. Yes. Here he comes. Yeah, so what are you gonna, what's he going to do about it? Ooh. It is nice to relax. I went and did some tiling yesterday for a friend of mine. Um, and she did the grouting this morning. And then it's just been generally running around doing family stuff for me this morning as well. Yeah, sure, no worries. Cool, Mike, that'd be great. Right, brilliant. We've rebooted. Let's go. We should really, with all these things going on, be scanning the wakes and getting all that data. Oh, dear me. What you all think of the shirt? Snazzy, eh? Commander Mars. Oh seven, Commander. There be the system. Of course, I've been scanning all the planets and all the data, and I've got about five hundred and eighteen shock mounts there. <laughs> The lemon one, I can't even bear myself to wear the lemon shirt that I wore last week. It's horrendous. It's horrendous by my standards, and I've got pretty horrendous taste. But you're right, Simon. It is loud. It's hot again over here, book 22. Which I know is not hot in compared to other countries, but it's still quite hot. Ah, 
Yes, he's, you're in the throes of the winter though, aren't you? We got, we got all that to come. Right, we want, it's the glory, glorious prospect is what we want. There it is. Yeah, no, they're all saying that over in the UK we're meant to have, you know, days of rain and really big rain as well, which is quite dangerous because when it's been so dry, well, we all know this, when it's been so dry, the rain hits the ground and just sits there and then, you know, flooding happens uh, and whatnot. So, it's always hot. So, how, how cold is it then? I, I kind of reckon it's a total country of extremes. Oh, fab, Mike. Um, I'm on my way. Give me the name of your carrier. And where it is. It's not actually sure where I am on this. Requires resources. Top 75%. Dump a few more in there, I suppose. You know, because why not? Why not indeed? I said, tell you a little game I picked up. Looks quite good. It's called Mr. Prepper on Steam. Only a couple of quid. I thought, oh, I fancy that. Um, had a quick go. You know, it seems to be involved, which is which is something. I don't know um, to what extent the gameplay is going to be. Pad number one. Come on, slow down, you think. Whispering adds it. That's in the system I'm in now. The Whispering Albatross. Oh, I'm making a mess of this landing, aren't I? Here we go, here we go. Do you know what? I did a couple of little sneaky missions yesterday. I really enjoyed them. It was a welcome change just to get out of the ship, right? Glorious prospect. Whispering Albatross. Twelve degrees C. I bet. Why? Well, that's that's short weather over here. Twelve degrees. Whispering albatross. Obviously, I've missed it. It's in this system, isn't it? C W U yeah B thirty two Yes C W B thirty two Ah right so what um So 
So where is it? So we're looking for Mike's Mike's carrier. Ah, there we go. That's where you are. Okie doke then, because that would have been too easy if it had been there, wouldn't it? Uh, uh, go not far away we're going to pick up some of that because why not launch cool cheers Mike we're on our way so what percentage of that community gold have you got there Mike Keep on trucking, what are you saying? Oh, in the top 25th, good man. So, what, you're just jumping your carrier, you're filling it up, right, with microcontrollers, and then you're jumping it back. Is that what you're doing? Because that's, that's impressive, dude. I've often said that there needs to be a, a better way of filling all these things up. Is Simon's Wiggle Wagon. Whispering Albatross, there it is. Dimey. Ah, three accounts simultaneously. Yeah, I still need... It's got to take time to do that, though, isn't it? so what do we all think what do we all think is going to be in update 13 then I know we're all hoping for like ground based thyroids and that would be good but do you reckon we're going to get a new ship because we're, we're due a new ship aren't we and what is that ship going to Is it going to be something ridiculous? You just never know. Oh no, there's going to be a loop of shame come in. Yeah, there's going to be some sort of Thargoid human, humanoid ship, isn't it? Where he's going to try and exert control, I'd imagine. But then the whole Azimuth saga is going to be over by September, so it's not really going to be worth them putting too much in, I would have thought. Here it is. It's a nice planet. This is flight 
Bike with the purple engines. Landing gear down. Ultraviolet. Ah, yes. This thing handles like. Forget how bad the ships are. Even with upgraded thrusters. Go. On Mike ship. Yes, we'll have all of that. Where is it gone? That's not it. You are now clear of the area. Good luck and fly safely, Commander. Like I should know where it is. Back in one moment.
I am back. Okay, so we've got a, a hold full of stuff, which is great. Let's jump back, drop it off. Axmill, 07 Commander, how are you doing today? Go, come on, come on, come on. Real. We want the Musashi. Musashi. It is easier sometimes just to do this and go. Glorious prospect. Thank you. It's the other way around. Finally caught one of my streams. Well, do you know what? And you're most welcome. So its community goals are the order of the day. And it'll be kind of come a time when there's no community goals. And then we're just going to have to make our own entertainment. Um, I've got to check as well when I get here. If, I, if I've actually unlocked the Guardian Shard Cannon. This is a pre-engineered Shard Cannon, isn't it? I think I might have one of those. Either way, I think the Shard Cannon is one of those weapons that is quite overlooked because of its short range. I've done some messing about with my graphical settings as well. Things seem to be running a lot smoother. Seem to be. So here we go. The glorious prospect. Oh, it's taken ages. Ah, good stuff, yes. So what's the difference on the Salvation Shard Cannons then? Hello Lord Narco Wookie, how are you? to spread. Ah, yes, I know. I, I, I get it. I get it. I get it. Right then. So, we want pad number one. There's six. There's one. Get ourselves over there. And land a bit. And we're down. Let's drop another load off. Thirty four million. High carumba. If 
for microcontrollers. How's that doing for my trade rank? That should be getting right up there. It's a bit warm, about 21, I think. Got the shirt on. People are wanting me out there for something or other. Um, got the frames per second of drop down there. Crazy, isn't it? Greedy Troll, how are you doing? Um, right, it's just... It's the Musashi has got the weapons, isn't it? That's right. Um, bum, 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 bum. Okay, exit. Galaxy map. Going back up here to... A67. Of course, you know, if you look at that, you don't get the, the latest update, but, you know, there you go. Sal Koki, hope I've pronounced that right. How are you doing? Hope you're doing fine. Um, happy Sunday. Have I just seen something? Oh. Bit of bad news in the UK. Amongst all the other stuff. But those of you in the UK, and of a certain age group, Bernard Cribbins died the other day. 93? 94, I think he was. Old Bernard Cribbins. Now you remember this, Simon. And you, Mike. Um... The voice of the Wombles, amongst other things. Jack and Ori, Storyteller, uh, Old Tom's Boat, Salty the Dog. He did loads, Doctor Who. He was in the original Doctor Who movie. Sad stuff, you know? All these British institutions, you know, now passing away. It's sad stuff. Same year, Simon, the Wombles, it was all about the Wombles back in the 70s. That was cutting-edge BBC material. Wombles of Wimbledon. Look it up. Yeah, he will be missed. Yeah, I've got... I think I might have an old 45 of it. Well, yes, the new Wombles are exactly that. They are... It's a bit woke, isn't it? The new Wombles. IT Agoo. Console transfer still seems to be on for September. That's what they said in the last stream, I believe. The original Wombles were brilliant. Utterly brilliant. Why mess with perfection? It's like Thomas the Tank Engine. They're all computer generated now. The beauty of Thomas the Tank Engine, in my opinion, right, and I've had four kids looking at this, is the fact that it was a train set. It got kids into train sets. Didn't it? Yeah, you know, I had, um, I think I had a Tobamori hand puppets and your marionette I think they call them marionettes well not a hand puppet you know on the on the strings it's a marionette isn't it I had one of those god knows where that's gone I know the strings are well flipping gone with that god knows where my, my sister's probably got it you know what I mean fish sticks oh do Basil brush now he's a favourite The I still use the old bubum bum catchphrase today you know Bring back the brush, I say. How inappropriate comedy that is. I mean, Basil Brush was the original um, hack of the dog. 
Commander Duck Duck One, how are you doing? Look seven, Commander. <laughs> Mighty, prepare to meet thy doom. Dun dun dun. Oh yeah, um, now, I forget which one of my, I had a Thunderbird too. And then, but it wasn't green, it was blue. Right, and then my son, who is now 23, he had sent Thunderbird to and the Tracy Island. Um, and that was green. Yep, everything's good over here, mate. So far, so good. Oh, Thunderbirds is absolutely ridiculous, isn't it? You know, but the original one, great stories. I mean, I work in IT and I go on about collaboration and video calls all day. Pretty much like what we're doing here. And, um... I think one of the first video calls was theorized on, um, I think it was Captain Scarlet. Captain Scarlet or Thunderbirds. It was a Jerry Anderson thing where they first showed someone going into a booth, um, you know, an international, yeah, it must have been, it must have been Thunderbirds, one of the first early Thunderbirds. And it was on there. <laughs> hey, let's not forget now, right? Sooty and sweep. Right? Sooty and sweep. I've long loved that. Um, even when I was a kid, I, I just find the comedy just raucous and slapstick, right? Uh, and I took my kids to go and see the live show. Oh, it was brilliant. I don't know who enjoyed that more than... More, more than anyone else. I, I was there, um, you know, obviously. Don't crash into Mike's carrier. Uh, so I was there. No dramas. Um, bought the kids the puppets. I had sweep. You know, it, it's some of those things, you know. It's, it's These are the things that define you. Oh, yes, the banana splits. That's the stuff. Who doesn't like the old banana splits, you know? Yeah, the, he had the, um, the, sort of like the little moon buggies, didn't they? But I tell you what, right? When you think about it, all banana splits, quite scary looking characters um, by today's standards. You wouldn't want to see one of them down a dark alley, would you? Oh God, look at this, I'm all over the place today because I'm talking. Yeah, it was good. I don't know if any of you have seen this, but I think Disney's lost the copyright or similar on Winnie the Pooh. And someone's brought out an adult version of Winnie the Pooh. Not that type of adult. It's called Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey. And it looks mad. I mean, I've got to see it, because, like, you know, what's all that about? Oh yeah, I mean, you know, Simon, I get it, Thunderbirds was ash stuff. Um, microcontrollers, Mike's microcontroller store. Find microcontrollers for the whole galaxy, everybody. So somebody wants me a second, so I'm gonna go to an intermission. Won't be a second.
All right, who's talking about animal crackers? No, they were mad. That was mad. Animal crackers. No, animal crackers. That was by... Who was the guy who did it? He died. Died about five years ago, didn't he? You know, he was a... Uh, Oh, he used to play the zookeeper. Not Terry Nutkins. So I'm sure he was involved with it. Yeah, fish sticks, you're right. That Wiener the Pooh stuff is mad. Absolutely mad is what it is. Right, let's go. Hang on, I didn't buy anything. What, another moon's been, been permit locked, is it? I hadn't noticed. Which one? Let's have a look. Well, I'm not in the right system, but... Um, no idea. I'm the duck duck one. No idea. Is it? I know. I know. Ten B was. Is there another one? Rent a ghost. Now that Steve Shaw. Right. That was a quality program. On and about. I think it was on at the end of sort of like children's television, wasn't it? So the children's television hour, two hour that it used to be on. It was on about half past five, just before the news, right? Because they knew people would be getting in from work. Having a bit of rent a ghost. <laughs> Cause it was mad. Was it Miss Popov? And it was the original load, wasn't it? Yeah, rent a ghost. But come on now. The goodies. Ah, that's right, yeah they did. They did yeet it over, didn't they? The goodies. Tim Brooke Taylor. Bill Oddy. The Gettys name. Oh, the, everyone loves the giant Dougal episode, but there was one that sticks in my mind, and it was the martial arts of Ecky Thump, and it involved people from Yorkshire in flat caps armed with black puddings. Remote control black puddings. That was absolutely mental. Absolutely mental. Just stick out of all of them, it's the Dougal episode and the black pudding episode. Cargo hold at maximum capacity. Oh, for that fish sticks, it was looking at around um Hang on a minute. I knew I'd bought it. Inventory. Yeah, they're there. They weren't there earlier on. Strange things are afoot of the Circle K. Yeah, that was a great... In fact, I'm going to see if I can find out that, uh, that goodies episode. It's got to be on YouTube. See if it's as good as I remember it. It'll be absolute pants. We know it will. Ecky Thump. That's the one, Steve. Ah, uh, yes, that's right. Well, yes, I think we all know why now. I mean, the sort of like the, the softer version of that was like Russ Habit's Madhouse, wasn't it? You know. Um, <laughs> oh, dear me. Right, where the hell's. Right, where did you pack? Where did you park, Mike? Bloody Christ knows. 67. That's yours there. Yeah. 
Um, yes, how? How was good, and it was that same guy off the goodies, wasn't it? I think no, no. How was Brian Kant? Brian Kant on how, wasn't it? Magpie. I don't know. I didn't. I know, but I didn't quite. I wasn't really into that. It was dinner time coming home from school because um, I used to go to my grandparents' house dinner times, and um, you know, ten, ten walking down the road by yourself, uh, different times, eh? And um, I remember going there watching rhubarb and custard. And then it was, um, you might have catched a bit of bag puss as well. Then it was back to school. And then, you know, you get some of those then repeated in the evening, don't you? Yeah, it is, isn't it? But that ecky thump one. I mean, they must have broken so many sort of like impolitically correct things. All time classic though, right? Faulty Towers has to be said, but it ain't half Hotman. And the BBC have said, and Dave, we will never ever show it. It has broken so many sort of like modern day conforms, but I've got it on DVD. Simon, I'm with you on that. I say I've got, um, just be in there, but I've got ain't half Hotman. Absolutely brilliant. Comedy at its finest. Yes, Danger Mouse. Now, Danger Mouse was a little bit later and Count Duckier, but there was Trapdoor. Remember Trapdoor? Brilliant. And back on the old 48k Spectrum on the Trapdoor, um, or back on the 48k Spectrum, have I gone to the wrong bloody, I've gone to the wrong planet, Mike. Where's your carrier part? I thought it was 67. Was it that one? HRC 671. I'm making it up now, to be fair. Oh, yeah, Trumpton, Campbellwick Green. That was good old BBC2 viewing. Pitkins? No, where's your carrier? Good old Pipkins. Trumpton. And then I remember Below the Wisp coming on, right? You know, and that sort of stuff. But then that was more for my sister and that sort of thing. But there was Trumpton, uh, Campbellwick Green, like you say, and there was another one. What was that other one? Ivor the Engine. Good old Welsh name there, Ivor the Engine. Have I completely missed? Have I? <laughs> Mike, it's hot. That's why you're here. Thanks for reminding me. So <laughs> I've got to go back. I've got a full cargo hold now. Uh, and now I'm going to go to, um, let's get rid of that. That's, that's, that's ridiculous. Um, now I've got to go to the, what you call it, system. That's right. Mary, Mungo and Midge. No, that was actually a thing, Mary, Mungo and Midge. You're right there. Ivor the engine. That's the stuff. Ivor the engine. Drive charging. Nog in the Nog. Hmm. I vaguely remember that. Um... Magic roundabout, obviously. Bag puss. Because you might not have got all of that in Wales, see, because of the television signals being different. Stick of the dump. Yeah, well, we read that book. Incomprehensive. Ah, yes, Nog in the Nog. That's right, it was Vikings, wasn't it? Yeah, Captain Pugwash. I needed another one as well, didn't they? It wasn't Captain Pugwash. It was there was another one. Of the same anime. Mr. Ben. Mr. Ben. 
Remember Mr. Ben? Gee whiz. That was some weird stuff. And as if by magic, the shopkeeper appeared. Wouldn't want to go and buy anything from that place, would you? Mr. Ben's been bloody everywhere in it. Yeah, Barnaby the Bear. That was like sort of world television, wasn't it? That sort of stuff. Red Ang Gang. Morph, yes. Morph and Tony Hart. Um... When you think about it, we had loads of children's television. I mean, now it's completely saturated, isn't it? It's, it's like nobody knows. But everyone used to watch Tony Art. Not so much the Tony Art bit. Oh, here comes Morph. Hey, Morph's on. Good old bit of stop animation. Yeah, good old Mr. Ben. And the show. And there was... Now, my sister, she was at the Button Moon Age, right? Yeah, 1 a.m. the weekends, that's the stuff. And BBC Two would take a break between 2 o'clock and like 4 or 5 o'clock in the evening. So, like, you get the test card up, didn't you? Remember that? Oh, those were the days. God knows what the kids watch these days. It's, it, it's, it's completely different. My niece watches some stuff. You think, don't know what this is. Oh, yeah. It's like, put this on, sir. Step into this cubicle. Yeah, man, I'm in the jungle. Oh. Yeah, I'm on a yellow submarine, or God knows whatever else he was, he was doing. <sighs> Mr. Ben. Clangers were brilliant, and they've brought them back recently, haven't they? I haven't watched any of the, the new stuff because it's the old stuff that I want to watch. Chortle and the Wheelies, yes. Now that was that. You are bloody dragon. Was that was Chortle and the Wheelies, wasn't it? That bloody dragon. Oh, God. Yeah, never mind Elite Dangerous. This is what it's all about. Children's TV of the 1970s. We could go Mastermind. Special subject. Children's TV of the 1970s. Here's your starter. Like, is it me? It's like the characters actually add some sort of substance. You just know it's just a load of flipping art students tripped out on acid. I'm um, going, here, get that camera over there. Get that bookend. Get that old furry cat. Make it look old. Let's make a TV picture. They'll think it's great. Whoa, what hidden meanings could we put into it? Dunno. Um, you just know there's a lot of that happening. And of course, it was all coming off the back of the 60s as well, right? Like with Bagpuss, there used to be like the sort of marionette stories, isn't there? Um, when that sticks in my mind is a Japanese folk tale about, oh, I don't know, some guy would build a bridge out of turtles. That always sticks in my mind. Right, what am I doing here? Yeah, double deckers. Chegas plays pop. God rest him. Um... Space 1999. Can't go wrong with that, can you? Good old sci-fi. British version of Star Trek. And I was flicking through Sky the other day. And it was on Forces TV. I know that they just done a remaster uh, of the DVDs and stuff. In fact, I've got two of the Eagles up the attic. I should get them down, really. Yep, run around with Mike Reed. But let's not forget, right? Tomorrow's world. The, the Tomorrow People. And Blake Seven. Now we're stretching into a little bit of sci fi now, isn't it? So the Tomorrow People, that was a bunch of weaponized teenagers with the ability to travel through space with the same some sort of teleporting machine. And they all had psychic abilities. Or something like that, if I remember. 
And then Blake 7 was a blatant rip of Star Trek, but just British and grittier. It was Serverland with the big knockers. Yeah, he died. Avon died, didn't he, recently? I say recently, two or three years ago. Paul Darrow? I'm sure he's dead. I think I met him once. Now, that was a class ship. And when they reboot, rebooted themselves and the Liberator became... Um, I don't know what it became, but there's some sort of lampposty thing going on. That was the computer that was called Slave. The professionals. Ooh. Yeah. Shut you slag. That's all the stuff there. I used to like Minder as well, mind in the original one. That was brill. You know, and it still sticks in your mind today. Daly's Motors. And I can remember them doing an episode of Arthur Daly into Europe. Um because the European Union and getting cheap cars and all the rest of it. 30 million. Um, um, it was good. Dempsey and Makepeace. Now they only actually did, what was it, one or two series of that? The Gentle Touch with um, Jill Gascoigne. And there was a follow-on to that. Leslie Ash in it. And I think Jane Asher. Might have been Jane Asher. And um, people from The Gentle Touch. <laughs> Mind? You got to send me the links of those privately signed so I can, I can, I can read them. Oh yeah, we are straying into the 80s now. Professionals, the Sweeney. Um, let's say Blake 7. Then of course there was Star Trek, which was actually 1967 it started, wasn't it, I think? When the first pilot aired. And then... I'm just trying to think of some of the other comedy. Oh, Dad's Army, obviously. It's great. Cool. But no, that's, that's some really good stuff, that is. Really good stuff. Right, where was... Where's the carrier? Is that it? Or is that it? I think that might be it. Love thy neighbour. Yeah, that, oh, uh, to the manor born. And then there was the good life. And I was talking to my mother today, right? And, uh, because we've got a busy house and we've got a double driveway, but we've got like three cars. So someone's always got to try and move their car so I get my car out. Butterflies. Remember that? Thanks, Mike. Open all hours. Open all hours. Now that was. That's 80s. Hello, hello. 80s. Classic. I watch that now. My missus hates it. But that could have gone for so long. Blackadder was amazing. But that, going, that's, that was 90s, wasn't it? Blackadder. Don't you think? Or was that end of the 80s? Porridge was good. Gear yeah. So, like, you know, the, the first season of Black Adder was abysmal. I think it really got good when, you know, he was the attaché to the Prince of Wales. You know, Black Adder. Black Adder the second, or something like that, wasn't it? Or Black Adder the third. Something like that. Yeah, well, Red Dwarf, when that first came out, that was always edgy and that sort of thing, wasn't it? Still going now. Christ.
Oh yeah, totally different show. Never really was a fan of Mr. Bean. Black Adder all day long. I think if he came back and did, did a Black Adder now, well, that would be amazing. You know? Um, I think it's the Elizabethan era and the Second World War was absolutely amazing. No, I'm not a fan of Bean. Everybody loves it though, don't they? Can understand it. Um, you know, good slapstick comedy. A bit like The Plank. Now, that's a 1970s one-off with all the stars in it. Do you remember that? It follows about a half an hour special, The Plank. And it followed a plank of wood across um, a certain area. That was excellent sort of slap slapstick comedy. Everybody was... The New Statesman, again, brilliant. Stands up even today, right? Um... And of course, the young ones, right? Yeah, not the nine o'clock do. Yeah, yeah, not the nine o'clock news, that's the stuff. Stargate Universe, well, come on now, that was 2000, wasn't it? Right, we've missed entire decades now. Even Stargate SG-1, and apparently they're bringing that back. And there's a game coming out by Slytherin Games. Stargate SG-1, something like that anyway. This looks quite good. Got the dead donkey. I liked Stargate SG-1. Wasn't you know, Stargate Universe was a bit... Mm, yes, it's Stargate, but like... You know. Um, but like in the 80s, you had Airwolf. You had Streethawk. You had Knight Rider. You had... 18. You had Blue Thunder. And more. And don't forget Dallas. And I loved it when I brought Dallas back. Right? Because, you know, never mind watching things like EastEnders and all the rest of it, right? Dallas. You know, EastEnders. Well, there's more going on in my life that goes on in EastEnders. Right? I tell you what. But like, Dallas came out feeling like, ooh, look at this. And they bring JR on, old Larry Hagman, and you think, oh, what's that cheeky monkey going to be up to now? You know, and they still got it, and they just left it so long. And then, you know, the main character, the main protagonist, is always JR, isn't it? Died. Sadly. But yeah, it's Dynasty. Oh, I quote the young ones all the time, Lord Marco Wookie. Had Castle and McCormick. Do you know what? Yeah, and that flashed up on my YouTube feed the other day. Had Castle and McCormick. Now, Hardcastle and McCormack, right? This guy had done, done some naughty stuff. And, you know, Grand Theft Auto or something like that it was, anyway. Anyway, so this judge had realised that this guy had talent and he was retiring. And he was sick of all the people getting off on technicalities. Right? Ah, where are we going? The hell's happened and um he had this convict right and this convict that was bruce box letter wasn't it i think uh and this convict was released to this judge's custody right a parole and they were using it then to go after all the corporations that had sort of slipped through the net and he had gone and pinched some prototype prototype hard fast car which looked a little bit like a a very small Ford GTR but, you know Knight Rider Street Talk was a blatant Knight Rider ripoff and um, you know yeah that, that was some classic stuff the A team brilliant and of course you had Buck Rogers in the 25th century which was popular for many reasons. Many reasons. Blake 7 or Space 1999. Blake 7. All day long. Um, you know, I think back of those shows. Get them remastered. 
get them back on the television. Get them on Netflix. I'd bloody well watch them. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Thelma, Thelma. Um, Wilma. Wilma was, was, was the one, right? Wilma Deering, who was played by Erin Gray. And then there was Princess Adala. Oh, yes. Very informative. Informative years, that was. Um, Buck Rogers, 25th century. Absolutely brilliant. I think they should do. You know, pay for it. It's up to you if you want to be politically incorrect. You know, I think some of those TV shows absolutely make it your own because otherwise you're just going to go out right and you're just going to buy it on on DVD. In fact, I think I bought Buck Rogers on DVD. I know I got Battlestar Galactica, both versions. Pretty sure I, bought, I 3D printed a Tweaky from Buck Rogers. I must get it painted and bring it in and, and put it with the menagerie of, of things like. So, oh, I think I've got a McFlurry coming. One moment, please. Yeah, so, now, oh, random matrix. This is a very random thing you've said, you. I've got to say, the best Star Trek was the next generation. Really? What do we all think about um, Strange New Worlds? Has any of you seen that then? It's currently on Paramount. Though, if you have Sky Cinema in the UK, get it free. I haven't got Sky Cinema. I do think Strange New Worlds is good. I thought he was really good in Discovery, even though Discovery was terrible in my eyes. Um, you know, Anson Mount came in, played Pike. I thought it was brilliant. Bit of a bouffant going on, isn't it? With his ear. Um, I like The Next Generation because, you know, was it seven series of that? Brilliant. First, first series, mind bit ropey there wouldn't it then it started getting good and that must be 1991 i think was that one that was strange new words wasn't it yeah i'm with you there steve i i think you know the original series star trek the motion picture as well and ratha khan after that it's a bit weak. Um, then it was First Contact, the next generation of films. After that, didn't really enjoy them much. It was the first two movies were good. Seen them all. Don't get me wrong. I, I hold them, you know, I hold them quite dear. But um, that Ratha Khan had it all, and they're never going to recapture that. Be you're right, Simon. It's going back to the well. Ooh, let's pull something up. What we got? Oh, let's reboot it. Um, some things just don't need to be... Re they tried rebooting Magnum, for Christ's sake. I also watch Magnum every Thursday. It was brilliant, as you can guess, the shirts. Um, 
And now they've rebooted it. And I watched one or two episodes. I thought, bah, rubbish. I mean, even let's talk about Dexter, right? Brilliant. Seven, eight seasons of Dexter. And then how he died in the end was a bit of a farce, really. There could have been a huge more seasons of that, ensuing a great big manhunt for him. Well, yeah, exactly. And you've only got to look at Star Wars for that. But some of the 70s stuff, they could never reboot. Because it was way, way, way too edgy. No, it wasn't a reboot. It was a sort of like the, the finals, final season. Wasn't it? But like when you think about things they've redone. How many reboots has Terminator had? I quite enjoyed the A-Team movie, to be honest. I think they kind of had the casting right there. Total Recall was ridiculous. The first one, I remember seeing that in the cinema. Brilliant. This one, is it Colin Farrell was in it? Better rubbish. Steve, we did. The X-Files. Oh, wow. And Quantum Leap. The Quantum Leap, right? Theorizing that one could travel in um, through time within his own lifetime. What was his name? Sam Beckett? That's right. That's the one. Loads of good stuff there. And quite a quite an educational program for you know history and current events. Yeah, I know what you mean, Steve. And they're rebooting Quantum Leap now. Oh yeah, Ashes to Ashes, Life on Mars, are basically an epitome of what we're talking about. In fact, I think, I think I preferred Life on Mars. Oh, brilliantly written. Exactly. You know, I think it was, um, I think it was really good. Really good. Really well done. Tune in every day for it, when it was on and watch it. You're right, Lord Narco Wookie. They are indeed rebooting. Quantum Leap. Yep. And of course, now you've got, you know, another Game of Thrones. Dabby Dave, you're right. Um, Quantum Leap. What was I watching the other day? Something bizarre. Oh, yeah. So I'm always a big fan of coming to America. Trading places and all the rest of that, right? And that's great. Um, and then on Amazon Prime like Eddie Murphy did the sequel which was good but in hindsight they should have just left it there that was nice that was a galaxy cookie crumble McFlurry oh the boys is brilliant I think it is brilliant I was, when I first saw the first out, I thought, mm, what's going on here then? And then, do you know what? As that's progressed, I think that's the sort of things that people want to see, in my opinion. Hold at maximum capacity. I'm at maximum capacity. Oh, they still can. They just got to sort of like put their big boy pants on and say, I'm going to take the risk. And do something a bit edgy. The 
problem I think is that some of the studios like like Disney in some cases Axe Mill thanks for joining they're very sort of like got to be PC correct and play to many audiences whereas the streaming services Amazon and Netflix have gone ah, take a chance we need content anyway you know why not and that's where I think they're pinning their hopes on Dungeons and Dragons, Lord of the Rings, whatever that's called, it can be whatever Lord of the Rings is called, Rings of Power, and um, House of the Dragon. I mean, a lot of good actors in House of the Dragon, and I think even Lenny Henry is in uh, the Rings of Power. I saw, kind of, I think I saw him on on the flashed up briefly on the advert for it, you know, the trailer. Exactly. You're exactly right. Right, where am I going? God knows where I'm going. Transactions. But no, I really enjoyed all of that. You know, I mean, the films as well. I mean, think of the 80s films or 70s films. So, The Black Hole, Vincent, Star Wars, Star Trek. Um, I always argue with my dad. There was a film, right? And it was called The Humanoid. Now, I remember this, and I was young. I mean, I must have been like eight. And, um,. Let him rip off of a bit of Star Wars, right? Some guy, nice, gentle, happy fella, huge giant of a man, um, crashes his ship and he gets repaired by somebody into a humanoid death killing machine. Uh, and he attacks this, um, this, one, this one outpost and they go after him and all the rest of it and try and rescue him. It's called the Humanoid. And I found it on IMDb. And he just swears blind that he never took me to go and see it. And I say, ah, well, you know, getting old now, your brain's going. But, um, they had sort of lightsabers, because you can't ask them if they're blatant rip off. Laser bow and arrows. And of course there was Krell. Classic. Jason and the Argonauts. Clash the Titans. You know? To name but a few. And then there was um Saturn I'm gonna say Saturn V as well. More killer robots that look like a lamppost or pretty much look like IG-88 from Empire Strikes Back. Oh, classics. Total classics. So yeah, really good stuff. So here we are now, hammering towards the glorious prospect. Saturn 3, that's the one. Saturn 5, Saturn 3, that's it, Stabby Dave. Now, was that Farrah 4 sitting at? I think it was. And the idea of this film was, was that um, a helping hand robot was being delivered to this research facility. And... Um, Something had happened where the guy who was delivering the robot and was imprinting his neural pathways on the robot somehow got replaced by an axe murderer or something like that. So he got implanted with a different person. Um, and of course, the robot went on a rampage. It was a bit like Aliens before Aliens happened, about three years before Aliens happened. Then let's not forget Alien, right? And Aliens 2. After Aliens 2, you know... Pfft, Forget it. Or aliens, I should say. Forget it. Farrah Fawcett, Kurt Douglas. You're right. That's a classic film, that is. Oh, and I tell you what. What, tell you what, tell you what. I've got it round just somewhere. Let me just... Uh, 
There it is. I haven't watched it yet. Silent running. Good old silent running. Bruce Dern. No. Forests in space and all the rest of it. A couple of quid off Amazon. Oh, it was Harvey Keitel, wasn't it? Yes. You're right. Utterly brilliant. Utterly brilliant. Of course, an odd 2001 A Space Odyssey. Pad number one. Pad number one. Where's pad number one gone? It's all the way over there. Somewhere. Are those fantastic films? There haven't been many films that I've gone out and seen in the cinema and I've gone, oh, but yeah, that was brilliant. You know, and you've walked out dazed. Um, not like those. Huey, Dewey and Louie. That's right, Jules, you got it. I always thought I wanted a 3D print one of those because it's one of those films that sticks in your mind, doesn't it? Um, yeah, silent running. Landing gear deployed. Oh, and there was, of course, everyone remembers Jaws, right? Taking damage. Orca Taking the killer whale. Ooh. Fantastic voyage, yeah. Good stuff. That was, that's always good stuff. Um, you know, what else? Back in the 70s, I mean, 50s, 60s, 70s. I mean, we're talking things like Lost in Space. Land of the Giants. Fantastic Voyage. Another, I think, defining film. And then, you know, hats off to Disney. 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Classic. Time tunnel. Now, I don't remember that. You got me. I'm going to have to write that down now, Steve. Phase four. Urban sparks. I haven't heard of that one either. It's strange, isn't it? Different films for different people. Yeah, good stuff. But yeah, Forbidden Planet. Classic. Robbie the Robot. Which was then used in Lost in Space. Stabby Dave. Have fun. Logan's Run. That's the stuff. Silent Green. For Ants Attack. Is that the one where they finally hold up in the hotel and they rip the wallpaper off the walls and they wronged it into a cone and they're breathing through that? Um, and the ants are crawling all over them. I've seen one ant movie way back when in the 70s like that. Piranha, yes. Piranha. Of course, they've made millions of those, haven't they? Piranha 16. Still bitten, in, still bitten in the forest. When worlds collide... Hmm. Don't remember that one. The quarter mass experiment. Yes. The quarter mass experiment. And then it was another one as well. 
Um, is that the Philadelphia experiment? And the carrier goes back? Because the commander of the carrier, his name is Richard Owen. Yes. Day the Earth stood still. The Triffids. Triffids. That's the stuff, isn't it? Dental. Dental stuff. And there was one, there was something going on. This was, this was 70s, early 80s as well. And it was a, a Scottish fishing village, right? Very quiet, nondescript. Can't remember what it was called now. And um, some pod had, had like washed up on the sea. And people were getting killed off and being mutilated and that sort of stuff. It was on the television, this was. I think it was like a five-parter or four-parter. And it had turned out as some sort of Russian bioengineered soldier. That was that was good stuff. Hammer House of Horror. Tales of the Unexpected. The original. Yep, and this island earth. Right, should we go kill some Thargoids and try and kill some Thargoids? I think we should, shouldn't we? Um, the day of the big heat. Now you're, are you making this up? I've never seen this. I have to get an IMDB now. Day of the big heat, never heard of it. This Island Earth, I've heard of that. Obviously Hammer House of Horror, I've heard of that as well. Ready for that, Mike? Brilliant. Are you in the, are you in the, the thing? In the the group. Here's my carrier. Sapphire and Steel. Now that was brilliant. They did two seasons of that, but the first season was by far the the best and perhaps the most haunting. Uh Joanna Lumley and oh, what was his name? Man from Uncle. Come on, Steve. What was the guy's name? David Callum. Ooh, there you go. Thank you, Simon. The first one was great. In fact, you know what? I quite fancy watching the first one. The second one they did, I don't think so much. But all these people were called after elements, and the elements with some sort of like super secret society or guardians or watchers that would go in and sort of like refute paranormal activity it was brilliant oh night of the big heat ah i see cheers michael uh here we go anybody else want in Sapphire and Steel was brilliant, although I don't remember the second season being anywhere near as good. I think it was, that was a five-parter, wasn't it? Drive Look at this. Virtually no Elite Dangerous talk, right? All talk about 70s and 80s TV and film. Hey, we loves it. Absolutely brilliant, you know? Well, Tales of the Unexpected was weird, right? That what? don't care what you say, that was weird. And then, Armchair Theatre. Never really watched that. Oh, a Monkey. How did we forget Monkey? That's actually been redone, and I watched some of it the other day. Not a patch on. Um, on, our, on our version of Monkey, the image. Ah, Pig's here. Um, and all the rest of it. Pigsy, Sandy, Tripitaka, and Monkey. In fact, there was a film one of the kids was watching the other day, which was the tale of the Monkey King, right? Which is what it's all based on. Hitchhiker's Guide, I think that when that was done in the 
early 80s, I think it was. It's good. Um, and a friend of mine, Terry Cooper, he's, um, he's building Marvin the Robot as a cosplay thing. Oh, the 80s one is, is by far the only one. The film... Film was the Forbidden Kingdom. Of the Dark Star. Dark Star was good. Demon Seed. I seen that. Can't quite remember. And of course there was species. And then there was the classics. Now we're getting into the 90s. The Bruce Willis classics. Die Hard. Die Hard 2. Then you add um, the fifth element. Brilliant. Tango and Cash. Big trouble in Little China. <laughs> like them talking about like yeah good old silent running like I said silent running yes the black hole which was do you know what I watched it with my son about two or three years ago. And he's only 11, so he'd have been nine, eight, nine then. And um, he was, it's before I built Vincent, right? And he's like, oh, you know, and he was really sort of like taken aback with it. I think he, he managed it about three quarters of the way through on a Saturday morning, which was good for him. Yeah. The Last Starfighter. Now they're talking about a reboot of that, and they're talking about a reboot of the Black Hole as well. Now, unless they make the robot look like Vincent, which was perfectly fine, in my opinion, um, there's going to be a bit of a problem with that. And, of course, it's like they kind of gave up at the end of the Black Hole, played some church music, put on a bright light, and threw the camera down a corridor. Just nobody knows what happened in the in the after. Some say it was the descent into the afterlife. It was purgatory. It's hell. That's right, Sam. We haven't got to watch it, but you feel compelled because you get so attached to the original film. Ooh, ooh, they must have made it better. Not really. I think perhaps with a few exceptions. Perhaps say the Mummy with Brendan Fraser. I quite enjoyed that. Yeah, you're right there, Steve. Right, let's get a, sh let's get a Thargoid killing ship. Uh, where are we, where are we, where are we? Now, what is that? That is plasma. Check out the ship kit. Or we'll go for the Gauss Cannon Badger. Use that ship. Have some Poppadom, Steve. Poppadom Preach. Form along. So into the livery section let's change it from a nice yellow into a Thargoid killing green let's change the weapon detailing to green and the engines to green it's all green and what have we got on this gauss cannons big whopping beam laser and they're they're engineered Gauss cannons, rapid fire modification. 
we got all the, the hell reinforcement. Camera A's across the board. Right then. Let's go. Thought you were making a curry, Steve. <laughs> Don't burn your mangoes. But you're right, Easter eggs are all about... Robots are all about the Easter eggs these days. It's, it's a shame because they were an integral part of what people went to go and see the show for. Ooh, and look at the robot. Ooh, and look at the robots. And ever since sort of like Forbidden Planet, Right, where are we going? We're going to that one. Mike's there all already. Jump. Get all our lights on. I mean, how cool were the robots of the 70s and 80s? And now you see me. And I wasn't really enamored with the new robots in Star Wars, to be honest. That little thing with a, you know, lamp casing on his head. That was just lazy. Um, even some of the different R2 units that were walking around looking like a Henry Hoover. No. There was only one for me. And that is the R series. But I always fancied making a power droid. Right, and Mike, where are we going? Should we go to a... Is there a low-intensity combat zone here? Or is it all medium? Or do I need to scan the thing? Right, brilliant. What have we got? Right. High, 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 medium. We do medium, doesn't bother me. Um, how about near a mega ship? How about. How about the illustrious fortune then? That's a high intensity, or we'll do. The Fortitude AX Conflict Zone. FNS Fortitude. Medium intensity. Good old Federation slug throwers. Right then, here we go. And of course, you know, there's the ship. We got all the lights on. Chained to an upright in an airlock. What? Don't be a nosy boy if you sign it. And we'll see how far we get with this. Oh, I see. Ah, yeah. It's, so she jumped 2,000 light years away, didn't she? You're a good friend to have there, Simon. Taking one there. Oh, 
Oh, it put in even all the planet. Get it. Get it. I bet you are not flavour of the month then. Mud. So we'll see, Mud was first football here. Mud was the first person to scan this planet. Here we go. We're crawling with Thargoids, they said. Okay, see if I can remember how to fight then. Here we are. Right. See what we got. Here we go. Let's slow it down so we stand the chance. God damn them in their shields. Bro Crow, how you doing? You've missed all the talk about 1970s and 80s movies. Egon. Another. They're going to shut us down in a minute. Yes, we are offline. Behold the greenness of this. Now we're a bit off the beaten path here. There's the ship. There's the Thargy. All weapons. Done a really good job, but your know, hearts are exposed there. Ships are back online. Illustrious for, uh, Fortitude. The Fortitude we are, Mike. I should say I am. Getting my ass handed to me. We got here. Eleven clicks away. Commander Rocro, yes, no problem. I will add you in. Are you in my group? Always need a hand with Thargoids. Here we go. There he is. Mustn't shoot the ship. Mustn't shoot the ship. We got all our lights on. Thargoid thinks it's daytime. Damn. 
on, turn around and smile. Come on. Right, come on. We're going to get exposed heart then, or what? Here we go. Suck it. I want to try and keep it tight with the the capital ship if I can. right what I said is that barrier is kind of getting in the way Brought to us, though. Going to come to us. Come on, come on, come on. I know he's a long way away. We want to. We want to remain nice and cold. Presenting nicely for us. We'll just line up now and let me shoot it, it'd be great. Here he is. He's coming around. Look how frosty we are. Yes, have it. Shut us down, all right. Look at that. We're right in a right old mess there. Did he die? Oh no, we've still got two on the two on the score. Got a little bit of guff going on. Oh, my beautiful green paint is now even greener. Right, let's get rid of that gun coffers. Silent running. Right. There you go. Right, so there's the heart. Need to be a bit colder. Letting him whiz around a bit. Oh, come on. Let me shoot you. Couple more hits now, and he's toast. 
course there's an incoming caustic missile. Of course there is. He gone. Kapow. Deader. On to the next one. There he is. Oh, you want to try and draw him in? We cook the ship then. That was madness. Someone's got purple lasers. How frosty we are. There it is. There's the heart. That heart is extended again. Look, he's nice and close to the ship, so... No, the beam lasers. Shields are coming up. I've got a malfunction gauss cannon. His shields are up, look at that. Got a heart extended. Good old Thargoid combat. What are we going to do without this? I boosted just as they're about to shut the ship down. Thargoids everywhere. Come on, turn the power back on. Of course we have. Brilliant. 
There's another one. Let's go for it. going off everywhere. I'm doing a quick reboot. What's the worst that can happen? Who knows? Power's off. I think it's being repaired. Scanner's back online. Beam leaders having a bit of a think about it. So, Gauss cannons, very powerful. Lovely. Plasma cannons do give you that bit of extra time to sort of like preload the shot. Turn around your sausage. This is a tough one. 42% on my hull. There he is, there's the heart. Can we get close enough to give it a go? There it is, heart's out.
The other went down, 24 million for that one. It's like a few scouts to go. Good work there, fellas. this this interceptor here because those lasers from the ship are giving it a right old pounding look at that come on he's gone behind the ship There he is. See the ships. Weapons are doing a good job at wearing those shields down. We're going in again. Thirty-eight percent health. Gotta keep an eye on this. There it is, there it is, there it is. He's gonna turn around. Functioning Gauss cannons. Who'd have thought it? <laughs> Intense stuff. The capital ship's doing a really good job of taking his shields down. Look at that, we're right up his trumpet. seems to be firing at him. I'm on 52% now. Oh, we've gone frosty.
We go. We're going in. We're right up his orbit. Look at that. Getting hammered. Come on, turn around. So, which one is it? Two of my Gauss cannons are damaged and are not firing. Hey! Come on! Fire your sausage! Yes! Gauss cannons, knackered. Look at those, two of them taken completely out. He's taken us offline. Well, some of us at least. There he goes. Stop shooting stuff at me. Everything is damaged. I'm trying to cook myself here. Gauss cannons are damaged. I'm trying to build up temperature. Thank God for that. I've got to go and I've got to retreat to the... God knows where I'm going to retreat to. Because I've forgotten. Boot and repair to right. Um... Yeah, those are the two per two permit locks we were talking about. Bright Sentinel. Oh. That's not bad though. I mean, you know, 66 million there. Pedal down now. Let's get back to the repair ship.
it, it was. It was very close. Come on, Bright Sentinel, hurry up. Powering, powering away. Get our lights on. It's a good old model. It's very busy now. I don't think it actually detracts much from the design, I wouldn't say. Now we're moving. we go. Come on, come on, come on, Bright Sands. Don't want to get back into the fight. Here we go. Going in. Come on, come on, come on. Pad number six. We got pad six. Keep down. Landing gear deployed. Let's get this fixed as quickly as we get a rearm as well. down. Brilliant starport services. Let's do a structural integrity of the ship as well. That'll do for us. It's 
some heavy stuff, innit? down here. Thunderstorms are coming in apparently. Gauss cannon crate. Salvation's Gauss cannons, no less. Okay, here we go. Let's keep going. Power, 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 power. Emergency operation update. Who's there? What was the emergency operation update? Any idea what that emergency operation update was? Oh, was that it? That can't be it. Don't know what that was. <laughs> Seventeen seconds out. I feel like this ship should have it's a, a hard point light should be a large hard point on the bottom as well. So you can put like an AX multi turret on. I don't know why, I just feel like it should be. Oh, come on, come on, hurry up. We're nearly there. Power, 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 power. So we're waiting on the Hydra, are we? There he 
he is. There's one. Perhaps we can get a bit of damage on him. Target destroyed. It's all happening over there, apparently. Let's get over there and see what's going on. There's Rosencrantz doing a fantastic loop. Look at that trail. Textbook, look. This is the Hydra. Looks like he's gone. Hydra's gone. How many hydras are how many hydras are coming in? something because we just picked it up on the that mr pointy Just look at its spikiness on it. All we've got to do is try and blind him now with our headlights. Our guns are out of range. And get back into range. Still laying fire on him. Right, his shield's down.
Now we're going for the exposed heart. God, he moves quickly. Heart's down. Shields are going to come back up. Maximum firepower. Caustic missiles, my ass. Well, I'll see if I can keep him busy for you. Oh look, the canopy's gone. 18% hull. Mike. It's all on you. <laughs> oh, where am I going to go? Quite amazing. As soon as people leave, I get completely shot. Five percent health. On the outside, it looks dirty, but you know, untouched. Model damage. That's what we want. Model damage. You're right there, Steve. Canopy breaks all the time. Fortunately, we got loads of air. That's all right. Sixty-six million in the bank. Yeah, exactly. Well, I haven't, that's the thing, see. Cabin pressure allowed. I'm pretty light on module. I've gone for hull instead, because I need the hull. Oh, I've gone past it, look at that. Richard, you clown.
Oh, so I can't see out the bloody window. Right, going in by instruments. There you go, invite sent. I'm going to go for a scheduled nap in a minute as well. I can tear that for nothing. It's getting hot here. There's the dot. The dot being the bright sentinel. Here we go. Yeah. And disengage. Atmospheric failure. Atmospheric failures. Well, we're all about atmospheric failures on this channel. Oh, what's going on here? Cabin pressure allowed. Docking request granted. Cabin request granted. It's going to be on the other side, isn't it? There it is. There's six and there's seven. Nice one, Jasper. Bask in the greenness. We're charging. We're moving. still not moving hang on there you go we're on our way Quite interesting I'm just taking a bit of time to look at my analytics and um, things are ticking over quite nicely you know not too bad um, we're all heading back to the fortitude now it would seem power to engines here we go
Come on, come on. It just takes so long, doesn't it? That's the only problem. Everything in this game takes so long. Come on, come on, come on. Right, here we go. Come on. Not that I'm adding anything to this. I've done my bit on the lower end Thargoids. These harder ones, beyond my skill level, I can't do anything with them. The amount of damage you have to lay down just to expose the heart on the Hydras is huge. Much more than my little ship can do. There we go. Come on, Fortitude. Thargoid Scout. Right, where's the Hydra, Mike? Good drive, you got Narco Wookie and, um, and Rokro here, because we'd be stuffed otherwise.
it's a shame, right, that can't use Federation ship to give you a repair while you're in the fight. Bloody caustic damage. Where's all these Thargoids then? Caustic damage, Mike, you just worn it off, haven't you? It's always scouts to shoot though, isn't it? You know? Let's see. Function cannon already. Target destroyed. Under attack. Oh, I'm under attack. No way, really. I've got no ability to repair my ship. Yeah. Target destroyed. Come on, come on. Anyone got any repair limpets? Oh look, there he is. <clears throat> I was wondering where he was. Not that I can do anything with it. Can't 
might say that. I might have shot that. I don't know. So where are you all going to repair? What's your repair ship of choice? Or have you got a carrier in the system? That's, that's one of the biggest questions, that, isn't it? What are we doing about repairing? Because the bright sentinel says that a little bit too far away. Repair limpet failed? How? How did the repair limpet fail? Who had repair limpets? I didn't. Is someone sending out repair limpets? Line up, line up, line up. Great, there goes the canopy. Got it. Oh, it's just tense. Come on, come on.
Oh well, there goes the canopy. Ah, the heart. Come on, come on. So all these repair limpet failed things. I don't know where any of that's coming from. You've gone really frosty. We've got all the love chat stuff going on there. Hmm. Love chat. This takes such a long time, doesn't it? I don't even think I've got enough time to... I, I've got 16 minutes. I'm either going to be dead in 16 minutes or... Right, I'm dying, dying, ship's gone. Ah. Uh. There you have it. Redeploy at the Bright Sentinel. Come on, let's go. Quick, quick, quick. to choose what I wanted. Landing gear oh, it's mad. Well, it wouldn't be a stream until I lost a ship, would it? We've got to break outside this planet. And try and get back. It's exhausting. Hydras take forever, don't they?
Oh, it's taking a while. Come on. Let's get in there. So, oh, we're coming up to six o'clock now, 20 to six in the UK. Heading towards the FNS Fortitude, AX Conflict Zone Medium. Everybody else seems to be shooting at a Hydra. So these repair limpet drones that are flying around, and I'm hearing an awful lot of this repair limpet drone failed business. Who's shooting those? Is it the capital ship? Because it should be. Or is it one of you lot? I don't know. And why aren't they working on me? Here we go, right and back. Repair limpet failed. So you can hear it, repair limpet failed. What's with the repair limpets? Where is everybody? Thirty kilometers out. Let's put our foot down. Right, I see it. We 
use only 14% then. Dead Hydra. Cool beans. Hundred and forty six million of combat bonds there, which is nice. Repair limpet failed. Decontamination limpet failed. Cannot comply. Frameshift drive charging. It's the Sashi to hand those combat bonds out. Yes, I got to take my leave as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go off and I'm going to hand these combat bonds in and call it an afternoon. It was really good. Great talking films, talking 70s television, 80s and 90s television and sci-fi films, all defining things that we've all been talking about. Plus, did a bit of trading. Got to shoot some Thargoids as well, eh? And that's not bad. Now, i got to find the ship, which is the second one, the Musashi. There it is. Let's go hand those bonds in. I mean, I haven't got much as it is. I mean, on the salvage, 50%. Oh, well. Um, at the moment, defend the Proteus Wave project. That was thanks to Mike and his, his carrier. Look at that. I'm only top 100% with that. I might get to 75. You never know. You never know. get these bonds handed in. There it is. Let's come in nice and slowly. Cheers, Alan. Here we go. Here is the capital ship. Bit more power. Docking request granted. Granted docking request. Right. Okay. going to be underneath, isn't it? Yo, no worries, Claude. Landing gear deployed. Here we go. Where is it? There it is. Pad number seven. Get ourselves around. Handing in the vouchers.
There you go. There it is. Job done. Look at all this stuff here. Crazy, 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 crazy. Anyway, there you go. Thanks very much. I've been Ricardo. Thanks for watching this stream on a little bit of Fargoid trading. We've spoken about films and TV and all the rest of it. Ah, generally good chit chat. And we've got to shoot some Thargoids. Thanks to everyone in the chat and everyone in the game. Mike, Rocro, and, you know, Lord Narco Wookie as well. Thanks for joining. Always a pleasure, everybody. And I'll see you all soon.